Twilight Sparkle had never been a show-off, but outperforming that boasting blue braggart had made her feel vivified. Her studies had paid off again, and she smiled to herself as she thought about the spells she had used in combination to take control of the cat catastrophe that had beset Ponyville. The pursuit of magical empowerment was her life, and the multitude of voluminous texts in her library was the source of her repertoire of spells. She had learned an impressive number of magical abilities from years of study. As she knew she was destined for a future befitting her strengths, she wanted to be prepared for any eventuality. How many ponies had she saved with her abilities already? Ponyville for sure. That Ursa Minor would have demolished the whole place if she had not intervened. She had also saved all of Equestria from Nightmare Moon and the tyranny that she would have wrought. These deeds had made every bit of study worthwhile, and she could use her powers for the benefit of all of Equestria, and had a suspicion that she would be called on time and time again in the future. Twilight liked the idea that she was useful to Equestria. It only validated what she had to do to maintain and sharpen her powers. Her thoughts were interrupted by the yawn of her closest friend, Spike. Do you want to try number 17 again, Twilight? Spike said through his yawn, distorting the words into a barely audible sentence. His eyelids drooping, and it was obvious he was exhausted. But he still was willing to work if Twilight wanted more practice. No thanks, Spike. I think it's about time for us to rest. Tomorrow is another day, and who knows what it might bring. We've practiced all we can for today. Twilight knew the number 17 well enough, already. The Lavender Mare valued Spike's diligence and assistance. However, he was the best friend and colleague she could have hoped for. Oh good, I'm bushed. I can't wait to get some sleep. You did great today, Twilight. It seems like just when I think you can't possibly beat your last trick, you bring out something more amazing. The baby dragon congratulated the mare on her ever-increasing knowledge. Thanks, Spike. It means a lot to me that you are so supportive and such a good assistant. I couldn't do it without you. Twilight flattered the dragon, despite knowing she could manage without his aid. She just didn't want to. She led Spike to the bedroom of their home, the library of Ponyville and quickly tucked him into bed, her horn glowing dimly in the moonlit room. She heard him snoring soundly before she managed to get under her own blankets. Twilight lay in bed, the soft fabric of her blanket and sheets sandwiching her body in a cocoon of gentle warmth, her mind drifting between the nexus of sleep and reality. Bathed in moonlight from the window, her mind wafted between the realms of sleep and imagination. Her eyes slowly closed as she watched the soft white of the moon in the heavens. It was no longer marred with the image of Nightmare Moon. She had brought back the princess of the night to Equestria, and banished the horror that was Nightmare Moon from her heart. Her magic had saved the powerful Olicorn from herself, and thus saved Equestria. It was amazing what the darkness inside of a pony could unleash when it ran amok. Twilight ascertained that every pony had darkness inside of them, something that could get out of control and cause suffering and sorrow to others. Sometimes it's a shadowy face and would rear its head and bite, as Twilight had learned, and sometimes it was a good thing. But the trick was to know when to let it out and how to control it. Princess Luna had lost control of her envy and it had threatened everything. Twilight wondered if the thousand-year banishment to the moon was meant as a time of learning to control herself. If so, she had apparently not done a very good job at it. Perhaps Celestia had wanted her to return her sister sooner, but feared the Nightmare Moon, part of Luna's soul, still controlled her. Celestia had needed Twilight to tame that beast and return her sister. Twilight Sparkle was nearly asleep. The noises of the night playing a soft lullaby. 
A symphony of crickets, cicadas, and other insects mixed in the distance, with the hoots of owls and throaty ribbits of frogs, lulled her away into the majestic realm of dreams. Twilight was almost past the barrier of consciousness and unconsciousness, when a sound snatched her back to the waking realm. She sat up in her bed, ears straining for what she had heard. In her dim state of awareness, it had sounded like a thick tree limb snapping. It wasn't uncommon for noises to magnify themselves in the half-awake state, and the lavender mare idly wondered what she had heard hadn't just been the sound of her home settling for the night, amplified by her own state of near sleep. Her ears twitched, and she leaned from her bed to spy Spike, still sleeping on his own. He hadn't heard it, whatever it was, but he was a heavy sleeper who didn't wake from thunderstorms, despite their severity. Twilight was certain something had woken her up, but eased herself silently back to her pillow, ears perked and listening intently. She was about to brush the interruption away when she realized that she didn't hear the noises of the night any longer. She had been so focused on listening for something that she didn't notice the lack of sound, as if her ears had simply stopped functioning. Something was wrong, but she didn't know what, and she let out a shriek and found it silenced. She kicked the blankets from her and was about to check whether she had awoken Spike with her shout when the movement caught her attention. A harsh flickering of azure light swept up the stairs, leading down to the main floor of the library. Twilight watched for a moment, her attention shifting from the perfect silence to this dancing illumination. Twilight had never felt frightened in Ponyville, and indeed didn't fear whatever this thing was, taking more of an intellectual interest in it. She watched as a blue pony in a purple cape and hat climbed the stairs of her bedroom. Trixie, the supposedly great and powerful. What did she want? Twilight was stunned that Trixie would set hoof back in Ponyville, let alone come to visit her, after what happened. It was a look on Trixie's face, a smirk of superiority and revenge that twisted the blue unicorn's features into a ghoulish expression that finally broke her from question to the action. Twilight realized that Trixie was the source of her malady, and a sudden anger washed over her. She sprung from her bed, but suddenly froze in the air between the floor and her resting place. Her body was paralyzed in space as the sky-blue mare brushed her white hair back and chuckled, a sound that echoed in her mind, but not her ears. Twilight, my dear, you seem to have chosen to aid the great and powerful Trixie's advancement of magic. Please, be a good mare and don't struggle too much. Trixie, like the Timberwolf she had slain, enjoyed these moments of helplessness in her victim's eyes. Twilight thought she was strong, but had to know now that Trixie was far more advanced in mysticism. Lula Moon's ego bristled, and she let out a condescending laugh, telepathically communicating her words to the frozen mare. Twilight's horn began to glow as she attempted to release herself from Trixie's hold over her, but its flickering energy soon died off as Trixie increased the smothering power of her own spell extinguishing the meager attempt to reverse her superiority. It actually impressed the blue unicorn that some pony could make an attempt so valiant. She hadn't had to waste hardly any effort to put the reversal down, but it was more than she had ever had to contend with before. Indeed, even the smallest amount of fight was welcome. It would make the victory that much sweeter, and testified to the capability stored inside of Twilight's head. That will not work, Twilight Sparkle. You cannot hope to beat me. Now you will know the true extent of Trixie's magic. Twilight ceased her magical attempts to conserve her energy, genuinely shocked and impressed with the degree of magical influence that the boaster wielded. 
It was not the same Trixie who had been in the town earlier. She was stronger, more adept. Twyla was curious and confused about the nature of her captor, her brain questioning Trixie's newfound abilities. There would be likely opportunities to break free of Trixie's control, and she was curious as to what Trixie wanted with her. Was she seeking revenge for the embarrassment Twilight had caused her in Ponyville a few days before, or was there something more at work? Something more sinister, perhaps. Twilight calmed her rapidly beating heart and decided to let Trixie take the lead for now. She had beaten her before and held confidence she could do it again, even with this new level of expertise. Twilight could see Spike still sleeping soundlessly in what her brain recalled to be a spear of silence. A spell like that was of moderate difficulty, and yet Trixie was balancing not only it, but telepathy and a holding spell with relative ease. Twilight's investigative nature needed answers, and as she watched, studying, as Trixie cast yet another spell, a quick orb of light flashed like a lightning bolt around them. A teleportation spell. Impressive. The pair had appeared in the Everfree Forest, and the still paralyzed Twilight was floating like a balloon into the wagon that she thought had been destroyed in Ponyville. Apparently, Trixie's magical abilities did not cease at hold and silence spells. Twilight quietly evaluate, evaluated Trixie's mastery of magic as she floated inside the cramped wagon. The mares barely fit inside the mobile home, and she felt her head dragging across the low ceiling. There was not only there's not enough room for the two of them, and Twilight began to wonder why Trixie had brought her to the wagon, when the rippling effect of time and space tearing set her in awe. Only a few unicorns or alicorns had ever been able to manipulate the fabric of reality in such a way. Twilight had spent many hours reading on the subject, and seeing a pony especially one she had wrongfully perceived as weakly attuned to mysticism, perform such a feat, shocked the inanimate mare. Trixie stepped through the tear in reality and gently floated her captive into her new abode. A knowing smile crossed her features as she turned to face the lavender unicorn and struck a flamboyant pose. Now you see that Trixie is not the meager magician you took her for. You, my dear Twilight, have fallen for my tricks by revealing your ample sorcery. While you cannot hope to contend with the likes of the great and powerful Trixie, you have become a great source of magical power. But unfortunately for you, that gift has only gotten you into trouble. Twilight stared motionlessly towards the blue mare, her body unable to move and her mind racing, taking in the scene. She was stunned by the reality distortion, but still remained focused on learning about Trixie's secrets. Trixie's cutie mark indicated that her talent was magic, just like Twilight's, but there had to be more to the story. Twilight knew better than to believe that Trixie simply held such raw talent. She was obtaining it from something else. She had to be. Practice alone could not boost one's abilities to such heights. Twilight had studied nearly her whole life, and yet could not even hope to break that natural barrier that stellified a unicorn's abilities without some form of supernatural aid. She wanted to say something, but Trixie's spell still had her paused in the leap from her bed. As she debated unleashing her magic, Trixie began to speak again. Trixie is certain that seeing these feats of magic has humbled you, Twilight. And if you were the only reason you were here, Trixie would set you free. But it's not. You are here to serve as... Her speech was interrupted by a sudden bout of pain spreading from her horn, forcing Trixie to cringe and clench her eyes tightly shut. She had feasted on the weak pink unicorn's brain only a day before, but the fluctuations in her magical reserves were already back. She should have lasted longer than only a day, but Trixie was feeling the loss of energy early. Trixie decided that the unicorn must have been pathetically weak of mind 
for her to need another boost so soon. Deep down, she knew that was really going on. That the only artificial empowerment gained from this dark art was addictive, and her body was responding more quickly to its needs. The twisted text that had spoken the dark arts to her had only hinted at methods to circumvent the growing need for consumption, and most of her knowledge on the subject had come from experience. She did not waste a bit of twilight strength, and needed to feed in order to get all the benefits from the Lavender Unicorn. Twilight felt the magical grip of her body weaken, as Trixie seemed to be struck with pain. The frozen mare watched the glow of Trixie's horn dim, and began to piece together the puzzle that was Trixie Lulamoon's secret. Her powers weakened as a result of something, perhaps overuse, or something else. Twilight needed more information before she could try to escape the mare, but she was learning more every second. The holding spell was wearing at Trixie's strength, and she could feel her magical prowess slowly slowing down as the fluctuations took firmer hold. She knew that Twilight would be unable to break her spells regardless of the state in which she temporarily found herself. However, she switched to a less strenuous magical restraint. She gently set the mare on the floor and released the holding spell. Twilight fell to the carpeted floor of Trixie's personal lair and library not expecting to have control of her body again. Finally able to move, she took in the room quickly, with a sweep of her eyes. She noted the shelves of books lining the walls, and the rich tapestries displaying Trixie's cutie mark. Trixie was a very egocentric pony, and the self-worship grated on Twilight's nerves. Did she really believe she was the greatest unicorn in Equestria? Sure, her magic was powerful, but that kind of hubris usually came back to bite the owner. Why did you bring me here, Trixie? What do you want with me? Twilight's voice was tempered with agitation, but respectful of the capabilities of the blue mare possessed. Despite being mobile, Twilight could feel her sorcery dampened by another spell. Trixie was allowing her to move, but not cast magic. She tested her ability to perform magic, feeling the restraint as her horn sparkled to light for a moment. She halted the spell, getting a feel for the power restricting her. Trixie grinned superiorly at twilight through the ice pick lodged in her mind. Some moments were sweet, despite the circumstances. You can't overpower that spell, twilight. Enjoy the last moments of your life. You should be admiring the great and powerful Trixie, and the feats you will never again experience. It's like a personal show for you. An interactive experience. Twilight's mouth fell open as Trixie spoke to her. Stunned, she found the urge to rebel immediately. She needed to keep Trixie talking until she could find out the optimum moment to unleash her magical strength. She felt panic swell in her breast but Twilight had always been able to call on herself in emergencies. She would not die here. You want to kill me, Trixie? I didn't mean to cause you any harm in Ponyville. I wasn't even going to use my magic, but you inadvertently brought the Ursa to town. I had to do something. I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. Pleading was something that left a stale taste in her mouth, but Twilight needed to get the overpowered unicorn talking. Boastful ponies were usually all too happy to brag about themselves. If she couldn't get her started, she wouldn't be able to buy herself some time. The pain eased away, and Lula Moon's power returned, for the moment. The blue mare had periodically proven that she could acquire greater power from another, while her own power was still strong. This meant that devouring Twilight's consciousness while under the glass ceiling of fluctuation and pain would waste a great deal of the power in the Lavender Mare's cerebral faculties. Trixie had also proven that ingesting a still-living brain was far more beneficial than one that had expired. 
It was as if the magic that flowed inside the unicorn's head rotted away, quickly, and not even a rapid freezing could prevent it. Therefore, she had a plan. Trixie first needed to eat the other stored mind to drive away the pain crippling her powers. Then, she would pry Twilight's skull open and consume her brain while she still lived, which was fine with her. Her ruse required that she allowed herself to be bested in the towns, so she enjoyed the helpless look in her victim's eyes as they understood how truly powerful Trixie Lula Moon was. The thought of Twilight's recognition pleased her so very much. She finally registered Twilight's words and responded, My poor Twilight, do you not understand what you have done to yourself? I do not seek revenge from you. Then why do you want to kill me? Twilight expressed, and her expression was grim and frightened as she spoke. She wanted to move closer to Trixie, hoping to discover something in her physical appearance that betrayed the source of her power, some amulets or other devices that could enhance one's magical strength, but she didn't think of any charm could do such a thing to this level. Unfortunately, when she tried to lift a hoof from the floor, she found it stationary, as if it had been glued to the spot. She inwardly sighed in frustration. More magical restraints. Wonderful. Trixie is certain you believe you can talk your way out of this situation. You cannot, my dear Twilight. The great and powerful Trixie does not simply want revenge for the embarrassment she experienced at your hooves, but wishes to assimilate you to her own power. Trixie turned back to the Lavender Mare, confident in her spells to restrain her. She stepped up to the couch and fell onto its recesses, calling the ice box from its storage place hundreds of miles away. The box flashed into the room, steam rising from, its, from it as the temperature of the room began to melt its icy surface. The confused unicorn watched in interest as the box appeared and Trixie opened it. A thick fog rolled from the innards of the box, concealing what was within. Her voice quivered with a hint of fear as she asked, What do you mean by assimilate, Trixie? Harness your abilities and take them as Trixie's own. Your powers will be mine, Twilight Sparkle. You will expire, but your essence will serve Trixie forever. You should be happy to be part of Trixie's amazing abilities. Trixie waited for a moment, turning her head to watch Twilight. The mare was probing her for information, and Trixie didn't see how the knowledge would harm her. Twilight was impressive, after all, and perhaps she deserved to know exactly what was going to happen. She didn't really need to explain, of course, because Twilight would see Trixie's pick-me-up and understand what her fate would be. She smirked to herself and decided to wait for the insolent purple mare to ask her about it. It would be just one more consensus of weakness, but Trixie wanted to hear it. A few moments later, Twilight waited for Trixie to explain, but soon realized that she was being baited to ask. Twilight was intelligent and knew the psychological premise for this action, but decided to appear weak. She wanted to know Trixie's secret, and perhaps it would further Trixie's underestimation of her. How do you do that? How is it possible to steal another pony's magic? That doesn't make sense, Twilight asked, with a soft break in her voice. Trixie is glad you are inquisitive. The great and powerful Trixie's natural talent is far above the likes of you, but... In order to be the greatest unicorn of all Equestria, Trixie has found the means to further her power. Behold, Twilight Sparkle, behold the secret to becoming the greatest and most powerful of all pony kind. Her horn flared, and the fog cleared from the icebox, revealing the decapitated unicorn head. Its soft green flesh was pale, and the red mane frozen in place. A dribble of frozen blood locked 
to its mouth and chin. Twilight went silent. In truth, the image didn't revel her. It actually made sense. Twilight knew about this heathen rite. Her eyes flowed, followed the floating head for a moment, before catching the somewhat unhappy glare from Trixie. She had expected Twilight to scream, wretch, or exhibit some sort of reaction. She had not expected a blank and seemingly understanding expression. Good. Now that Twilight knew the secret, she no longer needed to belittle herself before the selfish mare. Twilight remained quiet, simply watching as Trixie lay the head on the table and magically circumcised the dead unicorn's horn. Trixie felt uneasy at the lack of response. She was heating the brains inside the head before she could speak again. Her temper peaked and she regarded the stone-faced mare. Does this not repulse you? Are you secretly a cruel pony, Twilight Sparkle? Do you not believe in the sanctity of life or respect for the dead? Why do you seek such power, Trixie? Why did you stoop to cannibalism? Twilight's emotions appeared to be dead. She was a blank page, a stone, a flat box of ice. Trixie took the lack of emotion as a form of withdrawal and grinned. She was getting underneath that purple coat of hers. Yes, Twilight was afraid and had locked in place, unable to flee and receded into her mind. That was good. For a moment, Trigley had feared that Twilight might not brew in her own juices. Fear percolated the sorceress nature of the unicorn brain I would render it much more effective. She levitated the head and walked to face the restrained mare, letting the dead eyes peer right through Twilight. To Trixie's charging, Twilight didn't make an attempt to move and only stared at the blue mare. There was something wrong. She didn't know what, but she knew that her bullying tactic wouldn't work. Twilight had to be hiding in her mind. She couldn't be faced with such acts and simply be so calm. Angrily, Trixie turned to her luxury of her couch and sucked at the horn of the corpse, eagerly drinking the steaming brew. Annoyed with the silence, Twilight repeated her question. For what reason do you do these things, Trixie? To become the greatest unicorn in equestrian history, of course, you fool. When Trixie is finished, even Celestia and Luna will quake at her tremendous power. Trixie will be respected and feared like the wizards of old. No pony will ever laugh at Trixie again. Agitated, Trixie tossed the lifeless, empty head away and turned to the offending unicorn. Her powers rejuvenated. Trixie didn't waste any more time. Now it's your turn, Twilight Sparkle. The table in the center of the room suddenly opened, a circular hole appearing in its midsection. Twilight felt herself being pulled towards the piece of furniture, and held back the emotions within her. She remained silent and still, as the hole in the table swelled wide enough to let her body pass through, coming to rest on her haunches, on the carpet below. Her eyes locked with Trixie's as the hole in the table closed around her neck, holding her in place. Only her head remained above the wooden plane. The table choked her, but she refused to show any weakness. She looked up at the blue mare without fear. She knew Trixie meant to devour her now. Trixie was not sympathetic in any form. The delighted delight played across her face as she stared down at the trapped unicorn, her magic sealed away by Trixie's power. Her fate accepted. Trixie still had one little trick to play. I'm sorry, dear Twilight, but the unicorn mind is so much better for consumption while it's still alive. I will have to keep you alive while I eat your brains. I'll try and be quick and painless. But let's be honest, 
This is going to hurt. A lot. A small laugh escaped her, and she materialized the energy blade again, preparing to slice around the captive unicorn's brow and lift the skull cap away to reveal the delicious ridges beneath. The blade moved close to Twilight's forehead, and Trixie could smell a wonderfully strong odor of Twilight's magic. She grinned and pressed the blade, but it wouldn't move. She tried again, but the blade was locked in place. A sudden anger swept her, and she growled as she focused her powers into the magical instrument. It would simply not budge. Twilight began to laugh, her horn lighting up, purple and white, charged energy flowing about it, in a kind of that no pony has ever seen. The deep, thunderous laughter that rolled through Twilight's body seemed to be impossibly loud, her body physically unable to issue such rumbles. Twilight grinned as Trixie's eyes widened in shock. The purple mare's features became punishing and hard. A superiority filled her eyes as they began to glow with a sickly greenish light streaked with black energy. Trixie felt fear take her senses, sharpening them. She didn't understand this sudden strength from Twilight, but her dampening spell had fried from the sudden surge of magical energy. She called forth all of her power. The quickening had sharpened her abilities, and the fear had honed them into a razor's edge. But her spell only flickered and failed against the insane might that was Twilight Sparkle. Trixie screamed, not knowing what to do. Twilight was far stronger than she had imagined. It was impossible. But somehow, this unicorn was overpowering her own awesome abilities. She tried her spells again, each time powerlessly watching them falter. You are wicked, Trixie. You murder the innocent and use their powers for your own self-interest. Now you will be punished. Her voice echoed through the room, tossing books from shelves and nearly def deafening Trixie. Her voice was like the voice of ancient lords, the dark gods of ancient times. Twilight knew far more spells than even Spike knew. She concealed her true strength until it was needed, but once she decided to release it, she let all of her power flow. She easily opened the table and levitated herself from it, floating in the air as she looked and took hold of Trixie's body and forced her down into the locked table around her neck, sealing it tight against her throat. She could barely speak with the table pressing her tightly into her neck, but Trixie Lula Moon squeezed cries of compassion and begging for forgiveness, despite the pain it caused. Please, Twilight. I'm sorry. Please, I'll go away. Let... Please let me go. The desperation was thick in her words, but the only answer to the please was a grin. As a pony who took pleasure in others' fear, Trixie could see the twisted enjoyment in Twilight Sparkle's neon flaming eyes. Twilight wasn't simply filled with righteous anger. She was loving, punishing Trixie. We're not so different, Trixie. I can sense your intelligence and ambition. It's admirable. But did you seriously not wonder why there are only weak unicorns around Ponyville? Twilight's mind-shattering voice contained her pleasure at Trixie's forced submission. Now Trixie understood how worthless she was. Twilight took great enjoyment in releasing her true self on the evils of Equestria. They would find their darkness being reflected back at them. Twilight could never unveil herself this way to the ponies she protected, but to the vile monsters that attempted to demolish the peace and happiness of Equestria, Twilight Sparkle did not hold back. Please! Twilight Sparkle, please! Trixie begs you! Please! The captive mare felt her throat shredding from her wiles, but it didn't matter anymore. 
She was fated, or faced with a demon, against which she was powerless. I could only beg for her life. Shrixie felt her ladder release, and with all of her strength, to free herself from the table. Her mind beginning to fracture from the stress. The flesh of her throat and neck peeled away under the wretched pressure, blood running across the table as she fought. It's not often I get to feast, Trixie. I'm going to take my time. As you know, fear makes the magical power so much stronger. And I can smell that you are ready. Twilight chuckled at the irony and echoed Trixie's words back to her. You should be happy, Trixie, to be part of the great and most powerful unicorn in all of Equestria. That's the difference between us. On your own, you would have caused pain to so many. I, however, caused pain to only a few and used their power to aid every pony in Equestria. I have already saved countless, which renders those I eat simply a necessity. The beast that was Twilight Sparkle roared in ecstasy as the scent of Trixie overpowered her brain and grinning once more, twisting Trixie's words around on her. I will try to be quick, but in all honesty, this is going to hurt. A lot.